So, Chris Walton, welcome to PRGE uh, with your game, Zevius. Thank uh, you, James. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome uh, to be here. Yeah, it's great to see you in person. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, have you been watching people play this and see their surprise jaw drop when they see Zevius on the 2600? Yeah, it, it's actually really nice watching people play your games, for real. Um, yes. You know, because I play them at home, you know, in a garage essentially, and then to see actually people enjoying it and having fun with the games, it's, um, it makes it worthwhile. Yeah, because uh, yeah. you have the level of beta testers and you get feedback, you may get like yeah. video from them sometimes, but to have the, the people here and to like look at their over their shoulder and like the yeah. average person, because the Atari age community, they're like, experts like they know how to play games inside and out exactly yeah so to yeah. have it like an average person that maybe may remember Zevius or play Zevius come up and go oh my god I remember this game yeah yeah quite a few people have come come up to me and said this looks amazing for the 2600 so uh, it's really nice to hear that um, oh yeah <laughs> so yeah. you pretty much work magic to uh, get Zevius going on the 2600 like the the smooth scrolling of, of the play field in the background so yeah. Maybe talk a little bit about that technology or, or what made that be able to happen. So, for all of my games, it, it's kind of started with, and I, it started with the technology and then the game came later. I thought so, so with this, because this is pretty special. Yeah, so this technique I saw on an Atari Age forum, I didn't actually invent it, but somebody posted a demo of a four color play field. Okay. Uh, and I saw that demo and I was, I, I, I kind of realized that if you scrolled it, it would flicker less. And then I was like, that would make a perfect Zevius game. So it came right. that way around rather than um, rather than thinking I will make Zevius and then trying to figure out how to do it. It, it came with the effect first. Right. It, it was the same with Juno first. I came up with that, right. you know, that scrolling kind of beam rider yeah. effect. Yeah, yeah. And then I thought, you know, we could do Juno first on top of that. Yeah. And even Star Castle, I figured out how to do the, the circles. And then, I, uh, you know, <laughs> people said you should make that into the full game. And that's how it happened. So yeah, I think I, most of my games start with the effect or yeah. the technology and then turn into the, the game afterwards. Um, but, I, but I'm sure all these games like Star Castle, Juno first and Zevius, they are games yeah. that you like and that Yes. Like you go, yeah. oh, I can match that and mesh that and I can make my game that I've always wanted to make. Exactly. I have a whole list of games in my head I'd love to do, but I don't know how <laughs> yet. And then, you know, one day I'll find out uh, or come up with a good technique for doing it. So and I've, we'll and see I've seen that goes. over and over again where it's the technology, like uh, Jan, John Champo's Zookeeper, yes. where it's that, that flicker that made the bricks. And it's like, that can yeah. look like bricks. Yes. What game has bricks? Zookeeper. Exactly. And, yeah. And, yeah. It, and it's amazing that, that, I mean, it is the technology that drives it. What matches yeah. this type of system or this type of display? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's what the Atari is all about. You can't always do the full arcade experience, but you can get very close if you come up with a really nice kind of effect or way of doing it. Yeah. And the 2600 keeps surprising me. Oh, yes. Year over year, of yes. what it can do. It seems like a very simple, humble machine, play field, yeah. two, two player characters, missile ball, ball, and yet we're still here in 2022. Exactly. With a whole pile of new games. games that yeah. nobody would believe that could be made on the Atari 2600. So, yeah. Maybe uh, talk a little bit about why the 2600 is so special and, and what makes it so that you can make all these amazing games still. So I, I think there's a number of things. Um, I think because it's the, the kind of first commercially successful games console, I think that's brought in lots of programmers and people are excited about it. They remember playing it when they were children and you know they, they want to you know keep going. It's also extremely hard to program and so that attracts yeah. <laughs> that's, no frame buffer. It, exactly. There's very little RAM. Yeah. Yeah, and so it, the challenge of it attracts people, and I think, as you said, there's no frame buffer, and so, yeah. you know, how good the game is is a direct reflection on your skill as a programmer. It like is. you can make the game look better just by, you know, optimizing the code a bit, and almost no other console lets you do that. So um, yeah, it's, I, it's it's the culmination of all these factors, and I think yes. the challenge as yes. The nostalgia and the challenge, I think, is what brings the developers back yes. to the 2600. And one more factor I forgot is is the community. I think 
you know, just <laughs> as soon as you release a demo, people, you get so much positive feedback. And, um, you know, that encourages you as a programmer to keep going and to try new ideas and to release demos and, yeah. you know, um, yeah. And that's, keep, that's a big developing. factor. And, it, and it's a big factor for me as mm -hmm. uh, discovering Atari Age many years ago yep. and going, oh yep. my God. The, the system I loved and played growing up, yeah. it's still going, and there's still exactly. games and people enthusiastic about it, yes. and developing, and it's like, and I came into it going, okay, well, how can I give back to this? Because I know so many people like you making these games. Sure. What can I contribute yeah. back? And you yeah. know, I look at my skill set, and I'm like, as a filmmaker, I can do yeah. this and that and that, and it's and yeah. it is a community coming together. Uh -huh. you know, the developers, the beta testers, yeah. even the end users, just having that enthusiasm really pushes all of us forward, I think. Yes, and these games are not just written by me, because you know Nathan always does the artwork, and yeah. Thomas usually comes in and contributes code, and so does John and others. So it's it's always a collaborative effort. Yeah, so, there's, um, there's yeah. the programming, the graphics, the sound, the, the, the artwork. Yeah, uh, the distribution by Atari Age, like yes, none of us. Exactly. Uh, yes, exactly. I, I think I could say <laughs> definitively, none of us would be here without without Albert Albert. Russo. Yes, very much. Kind of being the hub mm -hmm. and holding holding it all together. Yeah, and producing all these cartridges that you can buy from the store. That makes it um, that the little bit extra special. So yeah, um, and yep. and you know having that feeling of holding the finished cartridge in your hand and, yep. and knowing the manual and the this. box and everything. Yeah. And it just yeah, takes you right back it does. to you yeah. know, being in a store and picking up that game. Except yep. now it's your game. Exactly. So uh, <laughs> and it looks yep. as professional, if not more professional, than the games that were out back then. Yeah, yeah, it's just the same. Like, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. exactly the same experience. Uh, and, and it's like yep. making a dream come true. I think all of us <clears throat> playing these games in the 70s, 80s, even 90s. Yeah. Uh, always, I think most of us sketch something out <laughs> on a piece of paper, oh, yeah. some terrible idea for a game. It's I like, oh the, yeah, you shoot yep. or you jump here, and it's like, oh. Yep. I've and got, uh, now we can make those dreams come true because the infrastructure's there. Yes, exactly. I had so many sheets of graph paper with kind of, uh, you know, Pac-Man and things drawn on them when I was a kid. And yeah, that, that motivates me as well to, uh, develop these games but um, yeah yeah, and yeah having, absolutely. having like all the code available and to draw on other people's uh code that they oh they discovered this trick yes and going yeah. back to how xevious could be made it's like you saw somebody post something in the forums yeah. or somewhere else it's like that's the key that's what i needed yes of course if this was in the 80s we'd be million millionaires as a result of these games but yeah, uh, that's, that's you the know. common trope it's like <laughs> oh if this came out in the 80s it'd be a millionaire and, yeah. and it is true yeah like these um, games sold in the millions indeed. but uh you know now we cater to our small but very enthusiastic community exactly that we are a part of yeah and that could, yep. you know contribute yep. back and be close-knit and meet at places like PRG, all the developers and you know, yeah. people have been coming up to me saying, oh, I love your show. And people probably have been standing around and I have, yeah. you know, playing the game with them. And yeah, it's, it's great. really fun. I know, I've really missed this the last few years. Oh, me too. You know, when it, there haven't been any shows and we've been stuck at home. <laughs> That's right. Of course, it has made us very productive in terms of coding, but- Yeah, um, me too. Yeah. I've been able to crank out the shows and do that, but yeah, uh, yeah to be back yeah. here is is really fun. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's great to uh, meet you in person. And, uh, yeah, thanks, James. I'm, I, I catch your show as often as I can. And it's, oh, thank um, you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's awesome to see you playing through my games and uh, And it's a pleasure to them. play your so, games. Yep. Yeah, they're thanks. really astounding. And Juno First is, uh, one of my favorites, and Xevious uh, as well. I love shooters, and you yeah. made two amazing shooters. I, I must admit, Juno First is my favorite too, and I think Xevious might finally be a kind of worthy sequel. Um, yeah. The other games are good, but those two stand out uh, for oh, me yeah. at least. For um, sure. Yeah. So, so thank you so much. Well, thanks, James. Yeah, I'll it's talk been to you a, online. Yeah, it's been a pleasure talking yeah. to you here.